today. I'm just gonna go over some fireball stuff related to Luigi and the Edge. Um, so first off, gonna start with mainly simpler stuff like positioning slash damage fireballs. So basically, what I mean by that is for characters that you're probably not gonna be able to necessarily edge guard or set up edge guards with fireballs, but to help your positioning when they're coming back from the ledge or just to add damage. So this would be characters like Kirby, Jigglypuff, Pikachu, um, potentially Yoshi because of armor. Uh, so basically that sort of thing just kind of you're running out there throwing fireballs at a bunch of various heights. You can use some runoff stuff too just to change angles. Um, for the characters that want to be coming from higher, like Kirby and Jigglypuff, you tend to sort of want to start on the side platform just to get them out there. And ideally, you don't want to have to fall off like that because then that leaves you vulnerable for like Kirby coming down, daring you, or you know Jigglypuff coming down and edge guarding you. So really, you want to just jump out there, get them out. The reason you want to jump f like off the edge in the first place is to get the fireballs lasting as far as possible because you can see this first one that I throw dies out not too far out there compared to others so it's it takes a lot of sort of mixing and, and meshing different heights together that you think work against certain characters and how a player is recovering also is a huge point of all of this Luigi is obviously a lot slower than a lot of other characters is in the air is very floaty so you're trying to restrict their movement as much as you can so that you can try and cover where they go so that's the first part really it, it doesn't look special at all the only difference here is that maybe a player might not think about j like jumping off the edge to have them reach further and they might just sort of stand here and, and kind of fireball like this which is also an option too depending on what's going on the only little addendum to this uh, would be regarding Pikachu where if you have a Pikachu player that is doing their up B to end up on the top platform over here a lot and you're kind of stuck over here being Luigi because you're slow uh, you can as you're doing these fireballs when you're doing one of the, you know, you're doing this one a lot, you can change it up by actually just throwing one towards the platform and trying to chase them down after. Um, even if they get the edge cancel here, the fireball might at least, you can see the height that I'm getting the throw at is sort of going to lock them in at least for a moment there, which is, is good. It's better than nothing. Um, so... That's pretty much the only extra bit there, and uh, now we can kind of move on more towards actual uh, specific ledge stuff. So obviously I kind of did one of these already. This is pretty important one. You can see the height is sort of even with the bottom floor here that I'm doing this runoff one. Runoff throw, land back on this edge. Landing back on the edge is obviously good because you can then have your jump back, do some aerials, do a down smash, down tilt, whatever you want to do. Um, so this is more for characters maybe like Fox, Falcon, uh, Ness, I guess, maybe Mario, Samus. Just that You're putting out the fireball at an annoying height, um, and it keeps you back on the edge, which is useful for you to then make another edge guard opportunity after that. Uh, another person this tends to be good on uh, is Yoshi. Not necessarily for edge guarding, but just that height. A lot of Yoshis are going to hit that, and that da damage matters on Yoshi. So, just to help get you to that armor breaking percentages faster. This height is also good for Yoshi because a lot of them will try to land on this side plat. Just use their armor through whatever you're doing down here and land on the side plat. So, go away Kirby. So, after that, after this runoff when you have the alternatives which there's there's two main ones that come to mind as far as fireballing off the edge uh, one is just this runoff throw that that one goes pretty far deep not usually that often but you can do one that's a little bit um, a little bit more useful but still not often useful which is that angle right there uh, goes a little more horizontal but still downwards to a degree 
and then you have uh, another angle that's more horizontal than that um, and the other tricks with that one are that you can do it from the edge here and re-grab which can be nice uh, so yeah this angle can be pretty annoying for characters recovering lower if for some reason you have a Kirby that's recovering lower this angle can be pretty useful um, Falcon, other characters, pretty much everyone that recovers lower this angle can be annoying. Uh, takes a little bit of timing to get it right, but you can actually do the timing pretty... Uh, it's, it's not that bad, you can get it pretty quick. But, yeah, and then, like I said, there's this runoff one that... It's slightly more downwards. You, you can tell if you pay attention to it compared to that that other one I just did this one all right so now we're gonna get into more of uh, examples slash more realistic situations and somewhat setups but more like examples of ways that you can do fireballs with edge guarding uh, I'm first just going to show a clip of myself doing one of the reverse fireballs that I was just showing um, in a clip against uh, Mr. Sir from a long time ago. Obviously, Falcon doesn't have the greatest recovery, and the thing about this is that the thing about all of this situation, all these situations that I'm talking about is th these aren't things you are going to want to do every single time. This is stuff where you have to you'll often have to mix up your different kinds of edge guards um, if you're playing a player that's going to adjust to the edge guard you're doing so that's just kind of a caveat that's always going to be the case with all these examples here um, so the first one here that I'm going to show which you know this is the computer so I can only do so much is um, just throw off here and a little hesitation before throwing the fireball and you see that hit him right and you think alright that's not a big deal but um so right like that right and then he up he's into the nair and it's all over so that's that's one little example um obviously you can't do that every time because after that first time, a Falcon's probably going to then delay their jump or delay their up B after the throw so that they dodge it. And, you know, you have to mix up appropriately. So we have Falcon here again. We're going to nair, have some percent, a little throw, then we're going to do a dash fireball. And bam, hit him. Now, obviously, these examples, because it's a computer, are all with the computer pretty much jumping right away. And. You know, a falcon that's hit with the fireball right there will just instantly up B again, but he's so close, so you'll probably be able to just nair, forward air, whatever you want. Um, the the main thing that that stops them from doing is just getting that quick, uh, just grabbing the edge after getting thrown at low percent, because most you're a lot of the time it's going to be hard to beat him there, but not necessarily. Just sometimes it will be. I think I might have a clip or two of other examples of me doing these things. Alright, for this first clip we have just a delay fireball, puts it at that awkward spot, and uh, yeah, just catch him with the edge guard after that. The next clip, same left side, but in a double smash, another delay fireball. He did an aerial, I'm assuming it's because I probably went out to edge guard him the time before. Okay, so we have Fox this time, and going to start with a similar example of Fox at 0% near the edge here. With Falcon, we did a hesitate, then fireball. This time, with Fox, it's faster, you have to do a quick dash fireball. And bam, runs right into it, edge guard, easy money. And that one, I mean, like I said, these are all examples. These things aren't things you can do 100% of the time. But uh, there you go, there's an example. And I had a little follow-up edge guard with it. Um, so oftentimes, if you do that to a Fox, they're the next time going to either delay their jump or jump towards you with an aerial. So then you have to be ready for that down smash or, you know, whatever you want to do, jump. Whatever you end up wanting to do. This time, we're going to jump and throw the fireball. And that's something you're more likely to run into, um, that height. 
Um, and that would happen also, that sort of height would also happen when a fox might delay their, their jump after you, they get thrown. Because they want to be like kind of like this area if they can when they do their up B. Gives them more options. Uh, so that that's kind of a similar height you'll see a lot. And uh, it also, with Fox, with a lot of these characters that would just be spamming their up B after they get hit by a fireball, oftentimes if you do one where you have a jump, you can do another one right after and it's going to give you a pretty good position. Um, so the reason that is is because it'll sort of just line up with where they up B again. Not really easy to show with the... Okay, there we go. I got a good one. So that was a good example of it right there. Um, that's more... That was actually fairly human-like. Alright, so we got another one with Fox here. It's going to be in a bit of a different position, but we're going to do a dash throw. And then another throw. Bam! Easy. Um, obviously, you don't have to do the second throw. You can go out down air or whatever. But that's just another example. Uh, the, the potential problem with that one is that when the fox is doing that first jump back a lot will, a lot of foxes at least if they get hit by it the first time they'll come back with a fair which will go through the fireball the, um, and let them land safely on the edge so if you catch a fox with this one time the second time after you throw the first fireball i would not throw the second one i would just uh, run up get cl and be closer to try and punish them when they land jab grab whatever and with every character I've shown so far and all the examples I'm talking about here these are not things you can necessarily do every time um, but they are pieces to give you a foundation to work off of and at least to mix up and try with these sort of examples and timings and all this stuff is things that you need to test and use and figure out with your own against all of the cast it's that's the that, that's the tough part about this video is I can't just show everything because you know there's so many different scenarios and players changing how they recover that you just can't go to it all so these are just tools to show you and uh, we have one more character that I'm going to do some examples with and that is although not top tier it is Ness Okay, so Ness, we're going to do similar to the others. We're going to start off with 0% on the side. Now this one you have to do a pretty delayed throw. Bam, got it. First try. And obviously a Ness would up start up being again, and then you can just go out there and aerial them, um, mess them up. That one's pretty simple. <laughs> uh, the thing to note with that, though, is if you catch them with that, uh, early on, the chances that they're going to do an immediate jump after a throw like that are pretty much zero. And most Nesses in general want to be sort of where the fox was, foxes like to be in this area when they recover. But Ness, it's even a little farther back just because it takes longer, so more like here if they can. And because of that, you're going to end up doing a lot more f like this height, full hop fireballs. And Ness will fall into that same thing that I showed with Fox where if you get hit by the first one and up beat immediately you'll often get hit by the second fireball so if you do that that double combo right there of double fireball it's often going to hit them all right hit you over there then we're going to do a different fireball we're going to do this one and that one I believe I'm actually going to try again because I didn't um I forgot what was going to happen. There we go. See, that's one of the double fireballs I was talking about, where the second one's often going to hit. Same with Fox in that way. So that's another another example, and it's showing of using this sort of setup that I had mentioned. Different heights, too, because if you do it too low, you ran right, you'll land before you can really start the second one in the same way. Okay, so I have another nest one here, and this time uh, we're going to do dash throws. And another one, and bam. Pretty simple one. Um, there's not too much else to that beyond that sometimes 
the second fireball, depending on the timing, can actually just cancel the electricity instead of hitting them, which is even better, because then they just fall down to their death. And, uh, yeah, I think that's the last example that I have in mind that's easy to show. Um, but uh, with Ness, at least um, those first, the ones where I hit him with the fireball where he's really close in the recovery, like this area w when we hit him, uh, if Nesses try to come back with an early jump the second time, they'll often do a fair or an up air or a nair in the way back to cancel out the fireball. So in that case, if you catch a nest with it the first time, you m might want to do the first fireball, but then instead of doing a second one, sort of just, you know, be in this area to punish or, you know, try and do something else. So that's pretty much it. A lot of this stuff, you just have to experiment and find out what works for you based on the tools that I've showed you. So hopefully that helps any Luigi folk out there and, uh... Yeah, see you around.